like the Jaden Rashada to Florida saga is reaching its conclusion. The expectation is that if asked, the University of Florida is going to release Jaden Rashada from his letter of intent. Jaden Rashada filed paperwork yesterday with the NCAA asking for release from his national letter of intent from the University of Florida, according to 24-7 Sports. He signed with Florida on December 21st, which was the first day of the early signing period. The filing, for the most part, marks an end to this saga, which has been brewing for over a week between Rashada and the Gators. If Jaden Rashada is granted his release, then he will be free to sign with or enroll at another school as a member of the 2023 class. Florida, for their part, should they choose, could take up to 30 days to respond to the request from Jaden Rashada. Harlan Rashada, Jalen's father, Jaden's father, you remember we we outlined all the players last week if you were with us in, in this whole deal, said we're in constant talks with Florida in regards to his enrollment, but I'd like to think if he's not enrolled by Friday, there will be some challenges there to proceed as planned. That was on January the 11th. So that was a week ago. That was a week ago today when he told 24-7 Sports that. So he hasn't enrolled. Classes have started. He's asked for his release. The only thing left to say is, is Florida going to let him go? Florida doesn't really have any choice but to let Jaden Rashada go here, right? Just do it at this point. Yeah, what are you going to do? I mean, he's not going to show up. No, 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 no. But I'm saying you don't have – if you're Florida, you don't really have the ability to be petty. Right. Nor should you. I mean, at, at the root of this, uh, despite there being clearly a lot of bad actors in his life, Florida didn't collective do what they made said a they promise. were going to do. Made a promise, signed a contract, decided, no, we're not going to do that anymore. After it was signed and the payments were supposed to start hitting the bank. Yeah, I think Florida would prefer for the headlines not to be about them – Welching on a bet. Yeah. Not exactly the same thing, but you understand what I'm saying. You don't want that reputation out there when no, you're recruiting these kids. No, no. In in the world of NIL, you do not want the reputation of promised one thing and then either couldn't or wouldn't deliver. And as we learned, right. it's more couldn't than wouldn't, right? They signed that contract without that amount of money available to pay. I mean, at all, let alone one player. I, I was going to say, but the thing is... It's not like that deal was going to require them to play, pay $13 million in one fell swoop. No. It's not how these are structured. But still. And so Florida didn't even have the money for the down payment? Or, in their or somebody told them, hey, this is stupid. That's also possible. What, wait, you did what? what? I imagine when Billy Napier found out, because we can pretend like collectives don't, talk to coaches and stuff if if we would like but oh, when grief. when Billy Napier I, we could pretend that all day when Billy Napier found out that they promised that amount of money to the quarterback he was recruiting he was probably pretty fired up cuz that seems like a bad use of resources when there's a lot of holes on that roster beyond that tell me how you coach a kid that's making 13 million dollars I mean the same way NFL coaches coach quarterbacks that make more than them yeah I mean it happens it happens in the pros all the time they're older. They're pros. I mean, they're not eighteen. I mean, I get it, but the the money isn't the issue there. This is it's just maturity. Yeah, I mean, Kyler Mur- Kyler Murray's a pro, quote unquote, and he's as immature that. as a college player. So, but it's a lesson, right? I mean, th- this is when when people screamed about sustainability and and oh, this this. This isn't sustainable, so Congress needs to step in. And my response is, from the jump, Ben, no. If it's not sustainable, let it not sustain. Yeah. When you get a school that promises a 17-year-old $13 million who's never taken a college snap at the most difficult position on the field, let alone the most important one, and it goes like this, this kind of stuff is going to stop. So, Borky, you are of the opinion that there is no such thing as too big to fail. No such thing as too big to fail. Everything can fail including paying high school quarterbacks 
insane amount of money. You think I, I would be shocked if Florida went down this road again? There's no way you could convince me that they would do this again. But and I, what's what's interesting? It's a much smaller scale, but but I find it really interesting that you saw a very similar situation play out here locally. What do they say in radio? Right, bring everything back local if you can. Let's bring it local. Ole Miss had a quarterback committed in their class, a four-star from Nashville in their class, for a rather significant amount of time. Then other programs started trying to get him late and offered more money. And there are some people, both fans and, and even in the media, that said that Ole Miss should have done whatever it took to keep him because you can't not sign a quarterback in the class, it seemingly forgetting that Recruiting doesn't just end in December. But still, there were people that thought that, well, you've got this war chest, just overpay. you, you got to sign a quarterback, just overpay and get him. And in reality, that would have been a really stupid financial decision. To get into a bidding war with Texas A&M over an unproven quarterback is a bad allocation of resources. It, it simply is. It doesn't make any sense. So they let him walk, and he went to Texas A&M. They ended up signing a guy with four years of eligibility anyway that was a higher-level prospect. And even if they had to pay more than what they initially offered to the previously committed quarterback, he's a better player, and you don't feel like you had to overspend and get into a massive bidding war to get him. It just makes more financial sense. So instead of, oh, just pay him, you got it, just pay him, just pay this high school quarterback that has only taken snaps against high school teams who may never adjust to life in the SEC because how many times have we seen that? Mm -hmm. Over and over and over again. Don't overpay. That doesn't make any sense. You don't have A&M money. Let them do that and try to portal as best you can and look at what has happened. I assume they didn't think that Walker Howard was going to be available when they let Marcel Reed walk but they knew somebody was going to be available. And look at what happened. Overspending on high school prospects when you have a limited budget compared to the oil tycoons over in College Station doesn't make any sense. And it played out perfectly for Ole Miss. It ended up being a net positive because they didn't bidding war for Marcel Reed with Texas A&M. 